Hello and welcome to a new episode of Adobe Creative Cloud TV. My name is Terry White and in this episode we're going to take a look at the newly updated Adobe InDesign CC. As a matter of fact, the January 2014 update. That's right, as part of Creative Cloud, your applications get updated on a regular basis with feature updates. So InDesign, being no different, got new features for January 2014. Let's take a look at what they are. Now, uh, InDesign, of course, is industry standard for creating uh, print publications, but it's becoming more and more the industry standard for also creating digital publications. And of course, a part of the um, process of creating digital in, uh, applications is making things interactive. So for example, things like hyperlinks, where in a traditional printed publication, it would just appear in print. We actually want that hyperlink to be clickable, tappable, double tappable, whatever, so that it works in your EPUB, your digital magazines, your PDF, whatever it is. And of course, hyperlinks aren't new inside um, InDesign, but what's new is just making them easier and faster to create. So I've got uh, this text here uh, selected, and I'd love to make that into a hyperlink. So no longer do I have to make a trip over to the hyperlinks panel or do anything special, just simply right click on it and say, hyperlinks, new hyperlink, either, either new hyperlink from scratch where I will key it in, or since I have a URL selected, go ahead and make it from the selected URL. Now, of course, that again, not a new feature. InDesign could do that before, but what got, what, what got enhanced here is a couple things. First of all, if we head over to our character styles, it just made this brand new character style called hyperlink. So that now any hyperlinks I create uh, that are text-based will use that character style. So if I wanna quickly and globally update the look of all my hyperlinks, I can now do it just by updating that style. So if I want them to be green or instead of blue or yellow or whatever color I want or not have an underline, I can do that quickly and easily by adjusting that uh, style. Now, it gets better. So let's say, for example, I select this, uh, this uh, backpack here, and I also want to turn that into a hyperlink. So I can right click, I can say hyperlinks, I can say new hyperlink, and uh, again, since it didn't detect one, I can either put in a URL or simply use one of the ones that's already here. Now, when I use one of the ones that's already here, it works, but you'll notice that um, in the hyperlinks panel, there's something new, and that is this green dot or maybe it's a red dot. The green dot basically means that all of your hyperlinks that you've created thus far, it's gone out and taken a look at to see if those URLs actually exist on the web. And if they do, it's green. If they don't, it's red. Now red doesn't necessarily mean uh, that it won't work. It just means it couldn't find that URL. Maybe it's behind a firewall or maybe it's on a site that isn't up yet, but it's just warning you, hey, the ones that are in red, I couldn't find. So for example, if I edit this hyperlink and I put in one too many S's for elite designs, it now turns that into a separate um, hyperlink because it's no longer the elite design ones. And it's saying, whoa, I went on the inter internet and I couldn't find the URL you put in. Uh, make sure that's correct. So I can go back in, quickly adjust it and say, yep, put in too many S's. Let's fix that. Click OK. It updates and now it's green and good to go. So that's the enhanced hyperlink workflow for InDesign CC. Now, let's take a look at probably what's going to be my favorite new feature inside InDesign CC for this time around, and that is uh, dealing with the missing fonts workflow. As you know, InDesign users uh, across the world create all kinds of documents and they use a variety of different fonts. But if you send that document over to a service provider or someone else to work on and they don't have those fonts, that it can become uh, tr uh, troublesome. So we've had this package feature, which allows us to package your traditional desktop fonts, but it really didn't do anything for your Typekit desktop fonts. And now we have a solution. So I'm gonna open up this document. Uh, I'm gonna update the links. And I can see right off the bat, some pink highlighting there letting me know, hey, you're missing this font. And as a matter of fact, the missing fonts dialog box comes up and it's saying, hey, you're missing Museo Slab uh, 300, but by the way, that's a type kit font. Do you want to just sync it? Keep in mind that when I click sync, that that's fair game because as an InDesign Creative Cloud user, I have access to type kit fonts. And if I'm sending an InDesign CC file to another InDesign CC user, 
chances are they have access to Typekit fonts. So they'll just click the sync button and whatever fonts I've used that they don't have will automatically be installed on their system from the Typekit desktop fonts. So no longer do we have this issue of missing fonts uh, that users just can't get access to. If we're all using the Typekit desktop fonts, we're all good to go. And speaking of which, the library just got increased to close to 800 Typekit desktop fonts, uh, valued at over $35,000 uh, US for you guys to be able to use. So Typekit desktop fonts now um, syncing directly from within your, um, your uh, InDesign documents if you open up a document that doesn't have the font. Now, uh, the, here's another part of the workflow, one that I um, talked about if you watch my Illustrator video, and that is, well, what if I just wanna use a different font that I don't have yet? Well, you'll notice that if I select this text, I can go to my font menu as I always did, and I can go find fonts and scroll through and so forth and so on. But now there's a new feature that says add fonts from Typekit. So for example, if I say add fonts from Typekit, it will take me over to uh, the Typekit library in my browser. And then for example, I can click on a font like Adele and say, hey, you know, this font looks pretty cool. Let's use Adele. So I can say sync um, four out of the 14. I can show, so I can select these four styles, sync them, and then what will happen is uh, in a few moments, my Creative Cloud icon will update that it's syncing and it's let me know that those four, four fonts are there. Now, here's the beauty of it. I didn't have to quit InDesign. I didn't have to go find a package that downloaded it and install it and figure out how to open it and use a font manager or any of that. It just worked. So now if I wanna change that to Adele, I can just go to my font menu, I can scroll up to it or a new button that lets me filter just my Typekit fonts. So there's Adele, and if I want that to be Adele regular, there it is, I just changed it. Or perhaps I want that to be Adele bold. And that font is not only available in InDesign, that font is available in all of my Creative Cloud products and all of my applications, period, on my computer. Because Typekit fonts are fonts. So that got installed and my operating system sees it. So yes, if you wanna use it in PowerPoint, you can. So that's a quick look at the missing fonts workflow. I have one more for you. Let's go ahead and take a look at um, enhancements to EPUB since we started off talking about interactive. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and open up this EPUB document uh, in iBooks. So let's just go ahead and drag it onto the iBooks application. And here I am uh, looking at an EPUB that was exported from InDesign. I could be looking at it on my iPad, my iPhone, other smart devices, um, or as we see here, right in my desktop computer. Now, in this case, um, we, have, we can see this number one here. This is a footnote. And footnotes could be cumbersome inside of EPUBs because depending on the size of the screen, the footnote could get easily separated from the actual reference point. So for example, the number one could be on the next page because the screen's too small. So rather than have to have users jump back and forth or jump around in their EPUBs trying to read the footnotes, we take advantage of an EPUB 3.0 feature that allows us to make our footnotes pop up. So as the user taps the footnote in their device, a little window pops up so they could read it. It's a little thing, but it will make reading EPUBs a lot better inside uh, or created from InDesign CC. Now, uh, how's that done? Uh, basically just going uh, from, uh, here, I got this document open here, uh, going and creating your uh, reference point. So for example, if I wanted to create a second footnote here, I could say uh, insert footnote, that will give me a number two and I can type in the actual reference, so this is cool. And now when I'm done creating my document and ready to export it to EPUB, I would just go to File, Export, make it an EPUB, save it, and now I get the, the choice for my placement to be inside of a pop-up for EPUB 3. So that is a new feature that we take advantage of for EPUB 3 right here inside of InDesign CC. All right, uh, let's head back to uh, the document one more time. Here we are back in uh, iBooks, 
I just want to point out enhanced support for Japanese and Hebrew readers. So Hebrew, for example, being a language uh, from left to right, I'm sorry, from right to left, we can uh, go ahead and see that as the screen is resized, the actual Hebrew language reflows properly. So as opposed to having a graphic or something that's fixed with or something that basically doesn't work like text, we support uh, these various languages right here inside of InDesign, of course. And now as part of the export, uh, if I scroll back and find that again, that's the problem with an EPUB. It can get away from you here. There we go. Uh, I can see that uh, this is reflowing <laughs> nicely uh, for my text. So even the Japanese characters are reflowing uh, based on the screen size. So that's a quick look at the new things inside of InDesign CC for January 2014. InDesign just keeps getting better. Illustrator, Photoshop, Muse, the video products, the web products, all keep getting better as part of Creative Cloud, as promised, delivering ongoing updates as soon as they're ready, rather than having to wait for annual release cycles or every 18 to 24 months for new things. You get them as soon as they're available, and I hope you enjoy the new things that are released today. Take care, and we'll catch you next time.